Let's go inside the Wellington Phoenix camp with James McGarry. Where are you uh, joining us from? Yeah, well, at the moment I'm just at the at the CAF at the uh, uni building we, we train at. Just uh, It's about, I think it's about, about 9 o'clock here in the morning, so we've got a few hours until training, so I'm just... Just, re just relaxing, having a coffee, and and uh, then getting ready, ready to go. How's life over there? That's oh, good. Yeah, we've obviously been here for you know six, seven weeks now. Um, yeah, really enjoying it. I think the the team settled in and really well, and you know, reasonably difficult situation. Um, but yeah, you know, the facilities we've got here actually, yeah, really good. Um, Wollongong as a as a as a town is is, is nice, really nice. Um, not too dissimilar from from home back in you know Wellington. Um, so yeah, now the boys are settling in well and, and enjoying it. And, and how does Australia's COVID response compare to New Zealand's? Is it about the same? Like, do you notice that you know people are wearing masks or you're restricted in going in certain places? What's it like? Yeah, look, I think it's pretty similar to be honest. Um, yeah, it's actually it's actually reasonably hard to tell from from the moment we got here. Um, obviously, they've they've done a, a really good job as well as as you know cutting it out. Um, you know, you still see on the on the buses and public transport, and you know some people walking around wearing masks and and good on them. Um, so yeah, I think I think it's yeah, pretty similar to to back home in New Zealand. Now you're back in the Wellington Phoenix environment. It's your second stint with the club. Uh, when, when you left, uh, you know what what kind of human, what kind of player were you to what you are now? Um, I'd say I was just, I was, I was obviously younger, um, less experienced than I am now. Um, you know, like I signed up the Phoenix when I was, when I was only 17, uh, I was there for three years, didn't, didn't, didn't play the games that I needed to and that I wanted to, to get the experience. Um, so yeah, I, at that time I decided it was, it was the right move to try and pursue something in, in Europe. Um, and obviously, yeah, I spent two years over there. It's not a long time, but I think the, the experience I gained just from that two years was massive and, and has definitely pushed me a lot further than, than I was. Um, you know, I'm, I'm super confident in, in the way I play, um, my ability as, as well. Um, I've definitely, definitely improved a lot. So I think, yeah, I, I just come back with a lot more experience and, and you know, I think this, this season's massive for us and, and I'm just super keen to be a huge part of um, the success that, yeah, we want to have. Yeah, you mentioned your time away over in the Netherlands. Uh, you know, how, how different were things over there in terms of the quality of the league, the way that they train? Um, I'd say, yeah, not not super dissimilar. Um, I think the only difference is, is just the player pool. Um, you know, Europe's a, a, a big a big place, so um, there's just an abundance of, of players, and especially young young players. Um, so I think that's where you know it is difficult, especially for us Kiwis, because you know it's it's a, New Zealand's not a, not a massive place, not not that many footballers. Um, so yeah, it was it was difficult going in there and having you know competition in the you know in the hundreds rather than just you know thirty or forty back here in New Zealand. Um, but yeah, look, I enjoyed my time over there. I, I gained a lot. Um, I didn't play. You know, I didn't play the games I wanted to, but going over there, it was always going to be going to be difficult. I, I went over as a reserve player, I didn't go over to be a starting player, and the, the whole point of it was just to push for a spot. Um, but yeah, it was difficult, uh, and I didn't get that. Um, and then obviously earlier this year, um, you know, when the opportunity was potentially there to come to come back to the Phoenix, I yeah, I knew I needed to take it and and uh, and, and yeah, get the game experience I I, I need. What was it like for you being all that distance away from home, away from your support network and, and at a different time zone? It's not like, you know, when things go wrong at training or in a game, you just sort of catch up with your mates in a local Wellington cafe. Uh, you've got to wait for the yeah. time zone to become appropriate to get on the Zoom call. Yeah, did you battle with that a little bit? Um, yes and no. Look, you know, obviously I was, yeah, I was 20 when I moved over there. Um, I think what helped me a lot was the fact that you know when I was younger, I think I was I was 12 or 13. I actually left home to to go and you know pursue football at an academy in, in Christchurch. Um, so I think you know me doing that has made it a lot easier for me to to move overseas and do the things that I do and, and not um, yeah and not let it affect me too much. Obviously, I think it's difficult for for anyone, any player, um, coaching and staff to to leave their family and and friends. Um, but unfortunately. Well, that's just that's just part of the job, unfortunately, and and you kind of have to have to move on and um, and just do the best you can.
Was it made all the more easier knowing that you had Michael Wood, the big keeper, alongside you? Yeah, it did, to be fair, yeah, 100%. Um, you know, early on, it, it was just going to be me at the club, and then a few weeks after I arrived, yeah, um, I heard that he was he was coming over, and, and yeah, no, I was stoked. You know, I, I lived with Michael for over in the Netherlands for two years. Um, yeah, and we're, we're, we're really good mates, and, and, and that definitely made settling in a lot easier. Um, but also, there was there was a few Aussie boys over there at the time as well, and, and yeah, we got along really well, so that, yeah, that also made the process easier. And also, look, my, my partner... Um, came over straight away. She was over there for two years, and and yeah, we we really enjoyed it over there. It was uh, yeah, the, the Netherlands is a cool country, and um, you know maybe potentially in the future I'd lo I'd love to go back. So um, yeah. Geez, James, I'll tell you what, mate, you are game living with a goalkeeper for as long as you did, because they're crazy. You know the goalkeepers' union. It's a strange old bunch. Oh, it's a, it's it is definitely a strange old bunch. Um, yeah, we've got a few strange ones here here as well. <laughs> um, but yeah, look, yeah, he's a funny guy. Um, I've, I've got a lot of time for Michael. Um, yeah, and, and actually, he's doing really well at the moment, which I like to see. He's obviously down in the second division plane. So um, yeah, look, nah, it was it was two years of, of my life that yeah, it was it was fun. It was good. I've never been to the Netherlands, but you know, friends who have been there, they always rave about the the cafes with brownies and. The red light district. I, I hope you uh, did. You steer clear of that, James. I mean, I don't want to lead you down a dark path. Oh, yeah, I think you are leading me down one now. Um, <laughs> yeah, nah. Look, I think it's just one of the one of the things you have to accept going over there. Um, yeah, cafes on every corner. Um, yeah, didn't didn't see the red light district. Um, yeah, went to Amsterdam a few times, but I I, I made sure I stayed clear of of that zone. Good man, good man. Now listen, in your second life as a Wellington Phoenix player, uh, you, you're actually taking over from your All Whites teammate, Liberato Kikachi. Uh, what, what can Wellington Phoenix fans expect from you uh, in replacing the Harry Kuehl medal winner? Uh, are you going to be the same? Are you going to be different? What are you going to bring to the side? Yeah, look, I think in terms of, in terms of playing, look, I think you know we obviously have the same, same tactics, same philosophy of play, so it's it's all about attacking up the up the wings and and you know being a really aggressive aggressive fullback. So I think in terms of that, yeah, I want to be doing the same thing. I want to be getting assists. I want to be getting goals. Um, but also, obviously, I want to be strong defensively. Um, so in terms of that, yeah, I think we, yeah, I'm hoping to be similar. But as a player, um, yeah, look, you know, we have different attributes, um, and I'm hoping to exploit mine and 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 yeah, do the the very best I can for my team, and, and I know I can. So. Yeah, look, I'm looking forward to the season. Um, yeah, I think we've got two weeks now, so yeah, I think we're, we're all just buzzing to get started. Um, and obviously, yeah, big ups to big ups to Libby. He's um, he's doing really well for himself, and he deserves it because, yeah, I played with him uh, in the youth at the Phoenix, and and I could see that yeah, he was he was going to be a good player, and and then yeah, he got the experience and and did really well, and, and kind of grabbed it with both hands, and, and look where he is now. So it just shows, I think, all the all the young players, young Kiwis back home, that that's. Nowadays, it's hundred percent possible to, to, to you know make it in football, make it in Europe, go to Europe and play. Um, so I think he's doing yeah he's doing big things for the game. Have you managed to catch up with him since he uh, arrived in Belgium? Yeah, I've, oh, I've had a few messages with him. Um, he messaged me obviously when I signed and said um, congratulations, which was which was cool. Um, and I said yeah, just said back to him, just keep doing what you're doing, man. Um, yeah, I always love to see Kiwis doing doing well in Europe and. And, and that's what he's doing. Obviously, look, he's he's in a team now that's struggling a little bit, but his, I think his performances have been, have been have been good. So yeah, he's doing he's doing everything he can. You mentioned earlier the role of the the wing back or the full back. It's kind of changed over the years to the point where you've got to focus on defence just as much as you focus on attack. Uh, what what aspect of the wing back role do you enjoy the most? Is it the attack side of things, or do you love just ripping into a a, a horrendous tackle on a, a pretty boy striker every now and then. Yeah, I think it's a I think it's a bit of both to be honest. Um, you know, when I go out there and and step over the white line and, and I see a, a right winger standing there looking at me, I'm all I'm thinking is I'm wanting to, to beat him one on one, one on one defensively and attacking. He's not going to get past me, um, and if he if he wants to get past me, I'll I'll take him down. Um, and also, yeah, I, I think the game is definitely coming to a point where it's, yeah, fullbacks aren't just defenders. They're not just out-and-out out defenders, not getting forward at all. 
uh, especially in the way we play. It's, it's all about getting forward both sides, um, whipping in crosses, obviously because, you know, we've got we've got Bully, we've got a um, new striker that's come in. So they're going to be wanting good quality deliveries from, from out wide on both sides. So it's really important that we, yeah, we get up the wings and put those good crosses in. If there's a chance to score a goal, score a goal. Um, and and but also get back, you know. I think I think it's a it's a role that, you know, you've got to be pretty fit to play. Um, so I think that's what we we've, we've been working on, um, you know, this preseason, getting getting fit, being able to do the K's, do do the high speed. Um, but then at the end of the day, you're a left back, so you need to be yeah, you need to be able to defend and and stay in the structure of of, of what you're doing. So. Yeah, it's a it's a position that that it definitely excites me. Um, there's definitely definitely lots of opportunity um, out wide. Gone are the days of um, not venturing past the, the halfway line. That's what I was told. When I was a defender playing in my, my rubbish team all those years ago. Like, don't you dare step over the halfway line. You're a defender. You stay back. Yeah, I'm yeah I'm thankful I'm playing in, in this day and age then because yeah <laughs> I think I would struggle not not stepping over the halfway line. Yeah. Uh, tell us about the, the new guys in camp. Obviously, you're one of them. Uh, you mentioned the, the new marksman up front, Toma Hamed. Uh, how, how, how are they all gelling with the squad? How are you gelling with the squad? Look, I, I think we've, we've, yeah, we're gelling in perfectly. Um, obviously, it was probably a little bit easier for me. I, I knew a lot of the, the guys that were here. Um, so, yeah, it was, it was reasonably easy for me to come back, and I played with, with the guys a lot. Um, but even just meeting you know, half the other guys that, that are here, yeah, they, they kind of made it made it very easy. Um, obviously, him it's just just come in in the last couple of days. Obviously, he had to quarantine, um, so he isn't yeah he hasn't trained yet. But yeah, he's he's I can imagine he's buzzing to to get started. And you know, we'll, we'll do the same to him as as they did for me. We'll uh, yeah make it very easy for him and 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 yeah make him comfortable. What are your expectations for the Phoenix this season? Obviously, last season they finished third, and then uh, things went awry in the playoff mix. H how how do you build on that with the new squad? Yeah, look, it's a. It's, I think it's a lot, a lot of the same. Um, I think it would be yeah, it'd be bad to say that we don't want to win. That that's the end goal. I think for for, for most teams is is to win. We want to win competitions, and and I think we're at a stage that. Yeah, it's it's a hundred percent possible. Um, it's just down to us performing week in week out, um, and and we can do that hundred um, percent. You know, we've been putting in some really good performances in the preseason, um, and, and you know, tactically building building a team that that understands understands you know how how the coach wants us to play. And um, yeah, when it comes down to it, we want to win um, every game. Three points is is what we need every game. Um, and if and if we don't get that, yeah, we're gonna have to. To look at what we're doing and 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 go from there. But yeah, same as last year, we want to push. We want to get to the playoffs and then and then push on from there. That's yeah, that's our that's our goal. You've been around the world and back again, seen a number of different coaches and managers. Where does Ufuk Tale rate in terms of his managerial success and style? Oh, I think it, it yeah, a lot of it say, says it for itself. Last year, you know, first um, first season in third place. Um, I, I don't think you need to say too much more than that. Um, you know, he looks after us, you know, he looks after us, um, works us hard. We've been working really hard this preseason. Um, you know, I think tactically really good. Um, you know, making sure every player knows his role, knows what he needs to do. And then at the end of the day, just work, working hard. I think that for most teams, you know, I think if you're lacking in, in that aspect of it, you're going to struggle, even if you've got the quality. Um, you need 11 players out there on the field that are that are going to, you know, pretty much die for each other, you know, run for each other, do everything, everything in their power to, to win. And, and that's what it gets all of us doing. So, yeah, no, very, very good. Have you taken the opportunity to cast your eye across the rest of the competition and who might be some of the contenders and, and who might fall by the wayside? Um... To a certain extent, you know, obviously you look at the, the top end teams from from last season, but you know, for, for personally for myself, not not really. Um, I think we really just need to focus on on what we're doing as a team, um, and if, and I think if, if we go out there and, and do what we do best, then I think the results will come, and we don't really need to worry, yeah, about who it's against. You know, you, you're going to fa face tough teams and, and teams that maybe are struggling, but. Yeah, I think at the end of the day, it just comes down to us going out on the, on the paddock and, and doing everything in our power to, to, win, to win the game and get the three points. 
How long do you think you're going to be over there in Australia? Because every day, here in New Zealand at least, we hear talk of a trans-Tasman travel bubble. It's going to be early in the new year. It's going to be in March. What, what are they saying across your side of the ditch in Australia? Yeah, look, we pretty much hear, hear the same the same sort of stuff about it potentially opening up next year. Uh, April, I've heard, things like that. Um, but to be honest, yeah, it is what it is. We're not, we're not really focused on the fact that it's 100% going to open. We're just kind of, yeah, we're living over here and, we're, we, you know, we're enjoying our time over here as, as well. It's, it's not ideal, but, um, yeah, it's, it's, it's going well. Um, and and if, if that bubble ends up opening up, then, then yeah, that would be perfect. You know, obviously, we as players want to, want to be playing in front of our own fans. You know, that's, that's you know, half, more than half the club um, is, is the fan base. Um, and they're obviously buzzing, buzzing to see us. So if, if we can at some point next year be, be playing at the Caketon and, in front of our supporters, that would be that would be perfect, and and we're all we're all, we've all got our fingers crossed for that. Um, yeah. But yeah, at this stage, we're we're looking at, at the early games and 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 just focusing on them. Absolutely. Hey, just lastly, James, before I'll, I'll let you go, I noticed in setting up this chat, you're you're charging around from the gymnasium into the cafeteria. I saw a, a magnificent looking sleeve on. Is it your left arm? Do, do you mind telling us a little bit about the ink, the artwork that you're 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 adorned. With. Yeah, yeah. Well, actually, I got my I got my first got my first one. Um, actually, at the Phoenix, I think I was probably 18. Um, and yeah, it's kind of just it's just things I've picked up over over my time in, in Europe. Um, some of it has has meaning to myself, some of it not. But that's just yeah, just what I like. Um, but yeah, obviously, I'm hoping to get some more at some point. Um, probably probably in the off season. Um, yeah, next year and maybe maybe finish it off if I have time. Oh, so what, what's finished in, in your terms? Like, where do you where do you finish? Well, that's yeah, good question. Um, I could finish my arm, and then yeah, like I'm. It's just something I'm. Yeah, it's something I'm interested in, and and you know, obviously for some people, you know, they don't like it, but yeah, for me I do. So eventually, I want to yeah, maybe get both arms done, maybe a little bit on my on my back as well. Um, but yeah, I'm not I'm not one to, to rush things like that. So yeah, all all in yeah, all in time, all in good time. Excellent, mate. I think it looks sharp. I've got a sleeve myself, so you've got a supporter in me. James McGarry. Yeah, Thank thanks you. so much for your time on the Kiwi Football Fix. Hope you go really well when the season gets underway in just under two weeks' time. Awesome. Cheers, mate. Thank you very much. Good talking to you.